We're doing this new segment. It's called Ana, Llévame Contigo. And that means, Ana, take me with you. Go first. So, I have to tell you that. Welcome to a special edition of the Anna Show, a frozen edition of the Anna Show. We are at the Ice Festival at Lake Metro Parks Farm Park, and we are here with, with an eight-time champion, Aaron. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. My pleasure. Man. Thank you. And you, you sculpted this, this the, the sea turtle, correct? Yeah, we carved a bunch of things here, but the turtle was part of a competition where we had 20 minutes to carve. Uh -huh. and we only bought two tools: a chainsaw and one other tool. All righty. And so, how do you get into this? You know, I don't know how everyone does, but I got into it because I thought I was going to be a chef. So I went to culinary school and I met up with Chef Richard Alford there. And he encouraged me to go to competitions. I learned about different tools and techniques. And that was 28 years ago. Wow. And so you've been sculpting for 28 years. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the process. Well, you start with a block of ice. Blocks of ice weigh 300 pounds. And, uh, you know, you use a variety of tools, chisels, grinders, chainsaws. So we, you know, we, we draw the design on, we cut, our, cut away the, the outside shape of the cookie cutter kind of. We block it in, we push the levels back, round it, sand it, detail, and clean it up. Wow. What do you think is so special? I mean, they're so beautiful. What do you think is so special about looking at these? They're just, they're just extraordinary. Well, part of it is that, you know, most mediums don't have refractive angles where a light comes through. You can see here the light is coming through the window and it's getting caught up in these refractive angles. And you don't get that with them. You know, stone or wood, or bronze, clay, any of those mediums. So, how long do they usually last? You know, it depends on the, on the weather. Nature. When we're outside, like this, Mother Nature's in charge. So, the sculptures here aren't going to last quite as long, but they'll last through the weekend. But you know, sometimes when we do them up in Alaska, they'll last for months. And then many times we'll set them up in parties for you know corporate events or um, hotels, caterers, country clubs use our services. And those sculptures set up indoors at about 70 degrees. They tend to last about six hours before the detail melts away. All right. So you're an eight-time world champion. Where have you been? You know, I've gotten to be in a lot of places. The world championship is held in Fairbanks, Alaska. But we've been all over through Europe and through the Caribbean. Uh, in Asia, we've been in China and Japan. So we've got to go. Ice carving has taken a lot of places. So. And so, how when you, when you compete, what's the breakdown? How do you win a competition? Well, there's a number of categories you have to, you know, achieve, but typically you have a nice balance between really good craftsmanship and a very artistic piece. And if you can achieve that, a lot of times that's kind of a recipe to success. All right, so is it trophies, is it money, is it both sometimes? You know, there are so many motivators, because I asked myself for a long time, like, why do I do this? And there's so many different things motivated. You know, of course, the things that you mentioned, trophies, prize money, things like that, but there's also teaching, there's learning, there is ego. There's a lot of different variables that go in to mo motivate someone to compete. Mm -hmm. Do you practice a lot? I do practice. Home, you know, at, at, our studio, home, yeah. at our studio, we, we practice components of larger sculptures. Um, this particular one I didn't practice, but uh, a larger piece for a bigger competition I would have. Awesome. Can you show us some? We can walk over yeah, and sure. show us what you got. So these were all made by the team at Elegant Ice. So beautiful. This brand was the one that I carved over. Yes. And so you provide these for events and for weddings? Yep. Okay. Hotels, caterers, country clubs, ice festivals like this one. But coming up later in the show, we're going to show you more ice sculptures. Thank you so much for joining us this oh, morning. Pleasure. Well, nice to meet you. And you were telling me that there's some baby lambs. We're going to see some babies, some new babies at the park. Yeah, down in the horse barn there, they've got a number of baby lambs. They also have a, a fuzzy pig. Yeah, take a look. Oh my gosh, so awesome. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. This is Matt Galini with Mentor iPhone Repair. We fix iPhones, iPads, and iPods. Most repairs are done in 15 minutes or less. If you're looking for a case for your brand new iPhone 7 or 7 Plus, we have plenty to choose from. We also have pre-owned devices at a great price. We can protect any iPhone model you have, even with the 5s and the 6s and the 6 Pluses. Need to get a grip? How about a pop socket? We also have a variety of iPad cases as well. I'm Matt Galini. Come and see my new store across from Great Lakes Mall. La Mexicana, you can grocery shop and eat authentic Mexican food for lunch or dinner. And on Saturday morning, they have the best tamales anywhere in the country. 
Enjoy the fresh bakery, bread rolls for 40 cents, only 60 cents for donuts, Mexican leclairs, cookies, and chocolate treats, and they have great prices on meat and exotic vegetables. Visit La Mexicana located on 170 East Washington Street in Painesville. La Mexicana, su tienda para todo. I tell everybody about this place, La Mexicana. Good morning, buenos dias. We are at the Strong Style Gym in Cleveland, Ohio, and this is where they train UFC World Champions. Champions. And today we talked to their elite trainers. Cleveland's own Stipe Miocic, now a four time champion, had a strategic victory, a big win over Francis Ninganu. Some are calling Stipe the best ever, and in his corner, he surrounds himself with world class trainers. Sleep control, all right? Cross collar. The cross collar makes him think that there might be a choke, and if he doesn't respect it, then we have the choke. Like Pablo Castro, a champion himself in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Also, I am a CPA, uh, my O6 uh, uh, grappling instructor, as, uh, uh, and then an A team, as well as all strong style. And I guess that's my night job, the day job of magistrate for Clinton Municipal Court. So much hype on the opponent in this last one. And so, I mean, we were all confident in Cipe, and you know, and we didn't combat that argument of whether he was the underdog or not. We all knew what Cipe could do, but there was something about just having everybody eat crow and and and, and all the you. doubters. And so, we didn't say anything. We let everybody, all the naysayers believe what they want to believe. But we knew what Cipe uh, uh, could do, and, and and did show the world. So, I guess we spoke, uh, and Cipe spoke through his actions rather than through any words, but yeah, that was uh, that was an exciting, uh, I wanted to bring back, and I mean, historic, I mean, not one single heavyweight has defended the title three consecutive times, and for Cepe to do it, somebody who started here in Cleveland, uh, homegrown, and who's a humble, blue collar, hard worker, uh, uh, as humble as you can be, uh, and nobody deserves it more. And the opponent was a big, a big boy. Oh, he was really big. I mean, and they called him one they in a million. The they called him scariest fighter. And said he was the baddest. Yeah, maybe, I might, he goes, I'm maybe not be the scariest, but I'm the baddest. And uh, he's, you know, but yeah, so definitely all the hype. And, and uh, Nagano was, was, was amazing. He was great. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. And he deserved all the, all the hype that he got. But he was going against Stipe, and we all knew what Sipe uh, could do. So uh, uh, it wasn't as much concern or worry as much just getting tired of all the, all the hype. But uh, he did what uh, we knew he could do, and then it was an amazing night. If you want your shoulder to be the bend of your, of your knee, so get it in more. There. Now you can relax a little bit. Now here you can take it all the way over a little more. I met Pablo years ago. He was good friends with um, a friend of mine who's a police officer, and Pablo um, was working um, in the Justice Department uh, in Cleveland. And I think he was an assistant prosecutor or something, you know. And uh, I, I knew of him because I knew he was a very good grappler and a very good wrestler, you know. And he started coming in on Sundays, and I wasn't there. And he trained with some of our guys, and they started having this relationship. Then me and him became friends. Then we became very, very good friends. And he came on board with us, and he, you know, he was kind of like a missing piece of the puzzle because I did a different type of grappling, but we needed more of a jiu-jitsu influence, you know? And Pablo was so good at what he did. And he also had the wrestling background, so it was very unique to have the to have somebody excel at both of those. And he's a very, very smart individual. So, like, I like that, because he's good at game planning. He looks and he can see different things. And he was an unbelievable competitor, you know? So, what he brings here is a huge value to us, you know, and, you know, He's a big part of our team, and he's an unbelievable coach. Don't just go like this, because now he knows something's up. Make him think about it. Try to pull it out. Let him try, you know, try to push. Make him think he's winning the fight. Was it a strategic win? Because we saw a lot of grappling, right? Yes, That's yes. You well, you know, MMA is a, is a combination of, of, uh, of styles and arts, uh, which is why it's called mixed martial arts. And so you have to be prepared for wherever the fight goes. So, Sipe uh, is a gold glove boxer. I mean, he, uh, he could uh, he could have outboxed him, which I think it showed even some of the strikes. He could out grapple him. He could do everything. So that we didn't limit ourselves to what we could do. And wherever the fight took us is where we went. And it took us to the ground, and it was really effective. So, a lot of mistakes happen when you try to force the fight. If Sipe would have forced the fight to the ground, he could have tired himself out doing it. 
But if the fight lives there, we're prepared no matter where it goes, whether it's on our feet or on the ground. So Steve A could, could do it all. And we were ready for wherever it went. And that's the direction it went. And we took full advantage of it. And of course, um, we got the victory. You guys don't have to just do the collar. You can grab the top of the head too as well. Just make sure you focus on bringing the po keeping the posture down. You know, I wanted to be able to have a melting pot of people in here from all different cultures and all different social standings, right? That's the key, right? That everybody gets along together, everybody comes in here with one common bond, and, and everybody is respectful of each other. That means more to me than almost anything else. And to have all these people get along well, and that's very, very important to me. This is a, a family. Everybody here, you know, uh, considers each other brothers and sisters. And, and we all, you know, we don't just, you know, train together here, but we, we go out to dinner together, we'll, we go to competitions, uh, we, uh, uh, we break bread. We um, you know, we watch you know uh, movies and fights and and this is I mean this is a family and so it gives us another uh, avenue to uh, to have different types of peers rather than some of the peers that you see on the street that uh, especially somebody who who grew up in a, in a poverty uh, uh, atmosphere neighborhood have the wrong peers or the wrong role models and so I mean we have doctors and lawyers and we have you know scientists and we have business people we have I mean there are so many different type of, of uh, people that are here that uh, we all outside of jiu-jitsu um, but the one thing that we all share is that uh, uh, desire to work hard to to uh, uh, to take uh, to try to achieve a goal hi I'm Jamie Brinkus you may remember me as the guy who invented eight-minute abs concept that unleashed an explosion of time-sensitive solutions to help you and countless others achieve your fitness goals in a very busy world. Now, starting now, I'm joining forces with Evergreen Wellness. That's right, this time I'm here to put the boom back in the baby boomers. Now I'm proud to be part of Evergreen Wellness and now you can be too. Hi, my name is Amparo Vega. I'm the owner and founder of Original Cleveland Watch Company. If you're a nonprofit or a high school looking for a unique way to fundraise, I can make you lots of money. Give me a call. The time is right to earn hundreds, even thousands of dollars for your fundraiser and show your school spirit. You can make up to $12 profit per watch and showcase your business or non for profit. Call now, Original Cleveland Watch Company at 216 905 3715. Bienvenidos a Caribe. Welcome to Caribe Beza. Aquí estamos ubicados en el mismo lugar, la 2906 Fulton Road. Here we have served two of our most popular platters. They're both $10. Come with a rice, a meat, a side. Sandwich cubano, sandwich de pernil, sandwich de jamón y queso. La gente puede ordenar para fiestas, para bodas, para cumpleaños. You can feel the love from just all of our customers here and how much they support us. Okay, Rosa, antes de que empezamos a cocinar, before we start cooking, we always dance, right? <laughs> Don't you dance when you're cooking? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna make um, sopa de salchichón, which is salchichón soup. Oh, and it also has um, chicken. She, she puts chicken in hers. So salchichón is such a funny word. <laughs> it's always salami. fun. It's a salami. It's a summer sausage. Yes. Right. So we're gonna show you the ingredients that you need for the sopa de salchichón, which is very. It's a Puerto Rican soup. It, um, it offers a lot of comfort. It brings back a lot of memories from our childhood when our moms or our grandmas would make sopa de salchichón. And it's so flavorful. The lata is la salchichón. Mira, and you can't just buy any summer sausage. You have to buy this one. It says salchichón, salami. And that's, it, it'll give it a lot of flavor. Okay, so we got salchichón. So one of these, right? Uno yeah. de estos. Uh, una lata de tomate, salsa de tomate, tomato sauce. Um, one can of chicken broth. She's reduced sodium. And then some 
Recaito. Recaito? Okay. Cilantro. Sí. Cilantro. So if you go to one of the local supermarkets in Cleveland and you look and it's a cilantro, it's the longer one, right? Because mm. a lot of times you use cilantro for, um, for other, for guacamole. Let's see this one. This one's longer. So this is cilantro, but it's a longer leaf, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, ¿cuánto pollo te le echa? How much chicken? Um, for six people, um, one, one pound. For six people? Or half pound. About a half a pound? Mm -hmm. Media libra? Sí. Okay. Sazón. Sazón, which you could also buy at the local supermarket. One cup down of rice. One cup of rice. And you know what? That's really important because sometimes I try to make sopa de salchichón, the soup. And I put too much rice in it. Oh, no, no. And then it gets dry. Yeah. And it takes all the broth. So, yeah. so this is one cup. Yeah, one, 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 one cup. Okay. No, right. Not too much rice. Or, or too much rice. And um, the angel hair. Uh, angel hair pasta, cabello de angel. Mm -hmm. All righty. And it doesn't have to be that brand. It could be another brand as long as it's angel hair pasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Potatoes? White potatoes? Uh, potato. So is that two potatoes? I, I cut um, um, on the... The little pieces. Uh-huh. Like this. Okay, so you dice you them can, up. You can cut a little, little more. Mm -hmm. um, make them smaller? Yes, yeah, smaller. Okay, whatever your preference is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Four cups. Four cups of water, mm -hmm. boiled. And then you throw the chicken in. And then how long does it take the chicken to... About 25 minutes. 25 minutes, okay. Mm -hmm. Four cups. To cook, okay. Yeah. All righty. Um, put the salchichon. Okay. Okay, put the salchichon. Is that a whole salchichon? Is it one salchichon? No, that's half. Whole? Half. That's a half of one? Yeah. Okay. That's, I put that one. The chicken broth? Chicken broth. Okay. All right. I put the potato. Mm-hmm. So I like it because it's easy. Oh, it's easy. Right? Um, as as, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. And it's affordable, so it's not yeah. it's not very expensive, right? Yeah. It's just some chicken, half a pound of chicken, mm -hmm. and some salchichon. Um, ¿Cuánto vale salchichon ahora? $5.99. Okay, so the salchichon will cost you about $5.99. Mm -hmm. The cilantro. It's the cilantro, the long leaf. Um, rice. Rice, okay. Okay. Um, um, Okay. Fideo. No, tengo la nevera. No. The fideo is the last, uh, the That's at the very end? Mm -hmm. Okay. One. So a little bit of sofrito, mm -hmm. which is the Puerto Rican spices. It's the secret of the Puerto Rican cooking. Mm -hmm. Now, did you make this one yourself? Yeah, I make it myself. Wow. I don't like it in the store. I buy it. I make it. Okay. It's so, good. All right. So that's a mixture of cilantro. Cilantro, pepper. Um, onion. Onion, onion, garlic, garlic. garlic. Do you put um, tomatoes? In? No, no, no tomatoes. tomatoes. Okay. No, no tomato. Um. <laughs> Cilantro. <laughs> Everybody does it a little different. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I don't like a tomato. I no. know, I know. Some Never. people are like, no, 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 no. I don't put that in there. Yeah. No, I don't put. <laughs> but some people do. Yeah. All right, and then they freeze it. Yeah, in the freezer. And yeah. it smells so good. Huele tan rico. But I don't have time to make. Uh, sofrito? You know how time? Ay, nena, no. So I find somebody like you. I mean, encanta. I put it. I put it in my beans and my I rice. Give, I give you a little bit. You give me a little bit. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. So how long does it take to cook? Um, twenty five minutes. Okay, so we got twenty five minutes. So we got twenty five minutes of dancing. Oh, 
Look at her, she's happy now. You're happy now? She wants to be in the middle of the party. Ya, Pupi. <laughs> All right, so this is what Puerto Rican soup, salchichón, sopa de salchichón, summer sausage soup looks like. Look at this. But Rosa puts chicken in it, too. Yeah. So you got chicken, and then you got the summer sausage in there, the salchichón, that is just, it just gives it a lot of flavor. And it just brings back memories of home. ¿Verdad? Yeah. ¿No te recuerdas cuando tu mamá hacía la sopa? Sí, yo me recuerdo, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> How, my mom used to do it in the, in, used to make it in the winter, uh, maybe once a month or twice a month. Mira, ¿y tu mamá cuántas veces la hacía la sopa? All the time. All the time? <laughs> <laughs> once a week? Yeah, once a week. Really? Yeah, I like, I like the soup. I like, I like, I, 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 I eat it. All week, all day, all night. <laughs> How many brothers and sisters did you have? Did um, you... I got um, four brothers and I got a twin. You're a twin? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I got another another uh, sister. Okay. Got three, two sisters and um, four brothers. This soup is so good. Mmm. Reminds me of my mom's soup. So we used to get up on Sunday mornings, like around noon and sleep in. But then the smell of the, the uh, salchichong soup mm -hmm. was so good. La sopa de salchichong. So yo podemos oler, you know, oler cuando estaba yeah. haciendo la, el, la sopa. Y este, so it would wake us up. <laughs> the smell of the salchichong soup. Ooh. Thank you so much. Okay. It's awesome. It's tan riquísima. It's good. Tan riquísima. You don't know this, but, well, now you know it. This is actually my second bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth Image Unisex Salon, where looking good is understood. Cleveland's first Hispanic female barber entrepreneur, and she does my hair every week. Her team does hair, updos, eyebrows, pedicures, and will do your makeup for that special occasion. Elizabeth Image Unisex Salon, located at 4355 Ridge Road in Brooklyn, Ohio. You can contact her and her staff at 216-961-4441, elizabethimage.com. Come visit us at El Rodeo. Home of the Mexican All-You-Can-Eat Buffet for only $8.99, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. They have daily drink specials and unique Mexican dishes. Bring your family, friends, and clients to their party room. A minimum of 15 people, $11.99 per person. Authentic and exotic food, sure to please anyone's taste buds. The tasty food keeps customers coming back for more. El Rodeo, 6900 Center Street, Menor, Ohio. Shelly makes jewelry for me. You can contact her at 216-815-7600 or go to her website at www.secretplacemodstyle.shop. Accessories provided by Simply Silver, unique fashion jewelry and more. Peggy Pokorowski at PeggyPokorowski at Yahoo.com. You can contact me on my website or on my Facebook, The Anna Show. Welcome to The Anna Show. We are at Lake Metro Parks Farm Park and Carmel here just had a baby two weeks ago and her name is Coco and Steve here from Lake Metro Parks Farm Park is going to tell us about Coco. She's so pretty. <laughs> so Coco was born about two weeks ago here at the farm. Um, it's a little girl and uh, she was asking what we feed her. She actually drinks three of these bottles a day. So morning, noon, and evening, she gets three bottles a day, which is about 12 pints. So her mom doesn't feed her from herself? No, so what we do is we milk her mother, and her mom produces too much milk than what she would need. So we take the milk and we measure out exactly what she needs to be healthy. Can we feed her? We can or? see if she'll get up. Okay. So how do you... Hey, Coco. Maybe she doesn't want to eat. If she doesn't want to eat, that's okay. That's okay, honey. Oh, she Let me have a little water in there. You can hold it if you want. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Is she nice? Is she not going to come back to me for any No, she, she made it. Okay. <laughs> so tell me how long you, um, you have to feed her. Um, 
before she eats on her own? Anywhere up to like eight weeks. Okay. So we've already started a little grain she can start nibbling on until she gets used to it. Uh-huh. But yeah. She's beautiful. Like now, will she be as big as her mom? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So her mother, she, in three years, she should be as big as her mom. Aww. And so did mama have more than one cat? Nope. They oh. usually just have a single. Aww. Every once in a while. Okay. <laughs> so what does that mean? Is she's she done? done. Yep. She's There's done. no more water in there. Yep, okay. So petting her probably is not a good idea? Oh, you can pet her. Good idea. Are you sure? She's going to try to suck her fingers. <laughs> Adorable. All right, see, so this is a Mangalika pig, which otherwise known as the woolly pig. The woolly pig, okay. Aww. She's pretty. What can you tell me about her? She's definitely different. I've never seen a hairy pig. Yeah, she's more of a heritage breed. Um, she has the long curly coat uh, with, that you won't see on our other pigs here. Wow. So we brought her in just to show the different types of you know, more rare breeds that are out there just to show everyone you know, what else is out there, basically. Uh, <laughs> so she was born the 14th. Uh, she was born the 14th of January? Yep. Okay. Oh my goodness, so she's only like maybe a week and a half old? Yep. Uh, I'll take a week and a half. So tell me, Steve, a little bit about this beautiful lamb. Uh, this uh, lamb, she's uh, about a, a week old now, a week and a half old. And uh, pretty much for about the next month, we'll be having more lambs down here. Uh, different breeds, different colors. Uh -huh. So how do you feed her? She actually eats from the mother. Yeah, Mama so, is not happy. Yeah. Is she no. happy with me right now? I'm holding her baby. She's just concerned. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hi, baby. So do people have pets and lambs as well? They could. Most of them farmers have the lambs. And or each kid show them, but not too many people I have as pets. Uh, Wonderful, so people can come out to the farm park. Yep, and visit with the lambs. And, uh, everything that's going on here in the winter months, which is a lot. Yep. You also, I saw that you were doing some things with the horses over there. Yep. So, for a Spanish phrase of the day, uh, there's a couple, well, a couple things we're going to say. Uh, so, horses is caballo, or caballos. And so, I'm going to somehow drive, you're going to help me drive this yep. horse. So we're gonna go left. So, did I do it right? Left. But our Spanish phrase of the day is caballo. Caballo is a plural, and this is a very cute caballo. So very caballo muy lindo. Se vaya con Dios. <laughs> so go ahead and pull back and say whoa. Whoa! There you go. You did it. <laughs>